I hate, I hate agreeing with Donald J. Trump. But as we approach the 20th anniversary of 9-11 this weekend, and ever since I heard George W. Bush would be taking a break from painting to speak at a memorial service for the victims of Flight 93 in Pennsylvania, I cannot stop thinking about this particular exchange between the Donald and W's baby brother Jeb back in 2015. The well, World Trade mother. Center came he down said during the gall to go after reign. my Remember mother. That. Hold on. Let me finish this. He said the gall to go after my mother. That's not keeping Look, us I won safe. the lot. Trump, at that moment, was right. Despite the boos, he was right. You cannot say George Bush kept us safe when George Bush was president on 9-11. In fact, we talk so much about what did happen after 9-11 that we don't tend to talk about what didn't happen before 9-11. The action that wasn't taken to keep us safe. The myriad ways in which the Bush administration totally, shambolically, shamefully dropped the ball on national security. The warnings that weren't heeded. The dots that weren't connected. The threats that simply weren't taken seriously. Some of you, for example, may know about the now notorious presidential daily brief, the PDB from the intelligence community, headlined, Bin Laden determined to strike in US, that was given to Bush more than a month before September the 11th. This was amid reports of a potential looming terrorist attack, including from Al Qaeda. The PDB mentioned New York as a possible target. It mentioned the possibility of hijacked aircraft. The FBI was already conducting dozens of investigations that were considered Bin Laden related. Then there's the story of George Bush getting a PDB on his Texas ranch about threats from al-Qaeda that summer. Bush replied to the CIA analyst explaining the risk, quote, all right, you've covered your ass now. The title of that PDB was UBL threats are real. And the guy Bush told was covering his ass was Michael Morrell, the future acting CIA director. And while Morrell now says the president was joking with that comment, he told another briefer at the time he was dismayed by Bush's flippancy. Can you imagine if Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton had been president on 9-11 and had, and had ignored such prescient warnings just 36 days before the attacks? Can you imagine how Republicans would have reacted? In fact, you don't have to imagine. Look at how the GOP turned Benghazi into a partisan circus when four Americans died, as opposed to 3,000 people dying on Bush's watch. But while many of you may have heard of that August 6th intelligence briefing, what you may not know is that there were 35 attempts prior to it in which the CIA had tried to raise the al-Qaeda threat with President Bush after he took office, according to journalist Barton Gelman in his book Angler on Dick Cheney. On January 25th, five days after the Bush, Bush administration came into office, the veteran White House counterterrorism czar Richard Clark sent the new national security advisor Condoleezza Rice a memo saying we urgently need a principles level review on the Al Qaeda network, a cabinet meeting of top national security officials. That meeting didn't happen till April, according to Clark. And even then it was a meeting not of principles, the top cabinet officials on national security, but just their deputies, one of whom, Paul Wolfowitz, only wanted to talk about Iraqi terrorism. By the end of June, according to investigative journalist Kurt Eichenwald, the CIA had prepared an analysis that all but pleaded with the White House to accept that the danger from bin Laden was real. Some CIA staff even reportedly considered putting in for a transfer so that somebody else would be responsible when the attack took place. And the headline of a June 30th briefing to top officials was stark. Bin Laden planning high-profile attacks. The report laid out that bin Laden operatives expected near-term attacks to have dramatic consequences of catastrophic proportions. This was an administration, the Bush administration, that, believe it or not, did not really care about terrorism until 9-11. Before that, it was all Star Wars missile defense and countering Russia and China, not al-Qaeda. They were obsessed not with Osama bin Laden, but with taking down Saddam Hussein, which they eventually used 9-11 to do anyways. According to Richard Clark, there was a chance, albeit a long one, that the 9-11 plot could have been exposed because some of the hijackers were known to US intelligence. But the Bush administration didn't take it, he said. Today, 20 years on, thanks to a very American amnesia, thanks to the passage of time and the hellish presidency of Donald Trump, we've forgotten how Bush not only launched the misbegotten and failed war on terror, but how he himself failed to keep us safe. And look, Peter Beinart laid out much of this case elegantly in the Atlantic magazine a few years ago. Quote, 
There's no way of knowing for sure if Bush could have stopped the September 11th attacks. But that's not the right question. The right question is, did Bush do everything he could reasonably have done to stop them, given what he knew at the time? And he didn't. It's not even close. So when the former president speaks this coming Saturday in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, when Bush marks the 20th anniversary of the worst terrorist attack in American history, maybe, maybe he should just start with the words, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.